Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is most frequently asked questions answered by Luba's support team. Yeah, we repeat such webinars yeah, almost every month. The, yeah, we present often asked questions yeah, in that webinar. It will take about yeah, half an hour and I will be the presenter. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Luba Software. I've been working for 12 years for the company. Before that, I had worked for 10 years as structure engineer. Okay, that's all from my side. Markus Baumgartel will answer your questions, but he can introduce himself. Hello, my name is Markus Baumgartel. I am responsible for customer support and frequently asked questions on our website. Markus, are you still there? Okay, we can't hear you, but uh, it doesn't matter. We close our webcams that all attendees can see the full screen. You can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can show or hide the control panel with that arrow here. And then you can ask questions, enter this field here, and Markus will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, because there are too many, yeah, you will get an answer via email after the webinar. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at lubal.com. Okay, then I will open the program and I will start with the first question. The first question is how to create parts list in RFM 6 and RSTAP 9. Yeah, that's quite easy possible. You only have to check, uh, click here, uh, cal calculate and then generate parts list. Okay, I increase the table and you can see there are concrete members and members of steel with different cross sections. You can see the volume, the unit uh, mass, the total surface area, you know, maybe if the steel members will be coated with paint or something like that, you have the total mass, etc. Then you can uh, you know, change the table all by material, the total mass of the concrete members and the total mass of the steel members. And it's possible to export that yeah, parts list and open it in Excel. Okay. Yeah, and then you can, if you want, you can modify the table. For example, if you want to have only the uh, want to have only the steel members in the table, then you can uh, yeah delete the concrete members, delete that. And if you want to yeah, divide the table, yeah, you want, yeah, just imagine you want uh, only want to have the total mass and so on of the HEB 400, then you can create a sum here. Yeah, maybe we can do it bold and copy that, etc. Now maybe the same for the uh, for the hollow sections. Okay, I have to modify it a little bit. Okay, and I could copy that. Yeah, just do what you want with the Excel sheet. Uh, I can, I think it's quite easy to modify it just for that what you want. Okay, I turn back to the program. It's also possible to print the parts list in the printout report. I 
activate R and deactivate R and print only the parts list, the parts lists in the printout report. Okay, now you can see the parts lists here. Okay, I can close the printout report and turn to the next question. Now, before I do, I will do that, I change the model. So, and the next question is how to release nodes and lines in RFM 6. Yeah, that's quite easy possible. I would like to show that on two examples. Now, one example for a nodal release, one example for a line release. I start with a nodal release. Now, we have got uh, two members here, uh, the upper or two beams here, and the upper beam lies on the lower beam. And just imagine does uh, um, that way lie loosely on the top of each other. That's not the case in the moment. Just let me calculate or show the results. Yeah, the upper beam yeah, pulls the lower beam in the minus set direction. Yeah, how to change that? Yeah, just for your info, there's an eccentricity. I open the beam and uh, the eccentricity. Yeah, the lower flange of the upper beam lies of the uh, upper flange of the lower beam. That's the eccentricity. Okay, so now we create a, a nodal release, insert, Special objects, nodal release. I open the dialog box. So I need to select the node, that node. Okay. Then I have to define the nodal release type. Now, where are different options? I would like to use the release in set direction and I use a nonlinearity. Yeah, you can see here that there are yeah, different nonlinearities are available, yeah, such as friction, diagram, and so on. And I select the fixed if positive V set. Now if there is a load in set direction, then it's fixed. But if there is a load in minus set direction, then it isn't fixed. Okay, I have to define a local access system. Okay, and then I can close the dialog. And I would like to release the members number two and four. Okay, that's all. And I can calculate all. So, and now I switch to the wireframe model. And now the upper beam can take off. And if I change the load in set direction, then it should transfer the load to the lower beam. That's the nonlinearity. Okay. So then, I switch the model, line release. Yeah, the same principle, but yeah, in another or one dimension more. Just imagine that the plate here, in that case it's a steel plate, lies loosely on the top of the beam. Then with that load, it uh, the surface should take off. How to create that? Insert special objects, line release, or line releases. So I have to 
define the line release type, use set as well, and the same linearity. Fixed if positive, we set. Okay, I select uh, the lines. Okay. And release the surfaces, all surfaces in that case. Okay. So now we need to calculate all. Uh, and now the plate takes off what is the surface. Now you can use it, well, for example, if there is a concrete slab over the steel member, etc. You have got different options, as you could see in the dialogue. Okay, that's all for this question line and nodal releases. I go back to that model here. And the next question is, how can objects be selected by different criteria at the same time? Yeah, many customers look for the special selection fun function, which we know from our previous program versions. Now you could, could find it here above. But uh, this function has been completely revised and it's now called uh, object selection, offering various advantages. Now you can find it under guide objects here in the navigator data and then object selection. I create a new object selection. And this way you can select and edit several objects at the same time. And the big advantage is that these object selections won't get lost yeah? and they can be adjusted anytime. Now let's create one, or I would like to create more object selections that you can see the different options. I start with basic objects, members, and the definition type basic. Now there are also more options available, types for members, loads. So, and I start with the definition section. And the section should equal HEP 400. Okay. And yeah, we can take a look at it. So all HEP 400 are selected. So then let's modify the object selection. I add uh, an, another option, the length should be greater than for example, six meters. Okay. And now that member and that member here, those are not greater than uh, six meters, are not selected. Okay. New object selection. Now, members as well. We've got only members in that example. So definition yeah, section as well equals and this time the rectangular cross sections of concrete. Okay. And we want would like to select the curved members. So that's why we select radius and the radius does not equal zero. Yeah. Right now, only the 
both are selected. So then I can change the visibility no mode. Only the both are, or, or only the selected objects are in the view now. And I can create a new view. For example, both. Okay. So, and if we cancel the visibility mode, then we can change the view again, and only the bows are you know, visible. Okay, so the last object selection, then it's done. Members. The section again the concrete sections the rectangular concrete sections and parallel to member so and I have to select the member for example this one and all parallel members are selected now. Okay, that's all to this question. I changed the model, a simple steel construction. And the question is, is it possible to perform the steel design only for selected members or member sets in RFM6 and RSTAP9? Yes, uh, yes, uh, such a, design is still possible, not only for steel design, also for aluminum design, concrete design, uh, timber design, etc. Yeah. Just change over to the table or I switch, or I select here in the base data, the add-on steel design. I select the st standard, uh, Eurocode 3, no, and I select the drum standard, but that doesn't matter. Okay. And I start the steel design. In that case for all members. Okay. We get results. We get an uh, yeah, error message. The stability design could not be performed. Uh, we didn't... Um, yeah, defined effective lengths or boundary conditions, yeah, but that doesn't matter. That's not what I would like to show. But when I go back to the input data, then for example, to that table, you can select the, the, the design situation. For example, if you only want to do ultimate limit state design. And in the next table, you can select certain members or sets of members for the design. So not design, you, know, you should not design all in that case, or I would like to show how to design not all members. I select, for example, only the platform beams, okay? So, and we are the one member set, and I start the calculation again. Okay, and now you can see only the platform beams and this member here, the member set has been, or have been designed. Okay, as I said, also valid for the other add-ons, the same workflow for all. Okay, then we turn to the next example. And the next question is, where is the setting for the shear stiffness of members? I usually it's only, you, you have got only an effect when you have a compact cross section uh, and considering the shear stiffnesses can be controlled separate, separately for each cross section in the edit section dialog box. So how to find the sections here, left 
in the left uh, on the left side and the navigate your data you can find the cross sections yeah the cross section the beginning and in the middle and if you double click on it you yeah come, come uh, or turn to that dialogue and uh, yeah, is uh, if here uh, deformation are con or deformations are considered a deformation increase due to shear forces will be the result. Let's take a look. That's the default setting. Yeah, and let's take a look at the results. The deformation is 24 millimeters, and let's deactivate the uh, the shear uh, stiffness. Okay, and you can see the shear parameters are grayed out. So, and we have to do that also for the other cross section. And okay, and then let's calculate all again. Before our change, we had 24 millimeters, and now we have got 21 millimeters. Now we have got only uh, we have often we we got this question because there are different results um, in comparison with the hand calculation and so on, and now you know how to deactivate the shear stiffness. Okay, then we turn to the next model. So, and the next question is, can I switch off the display for the reinforcement in the model? Yeah, that's possible. All types available for the concrete design can be displayed graphi graphically in the work window. Let's switch to the navigator display and you can find here types for concrete design. And there are different options. You can yeah, disable the long, longitudinal reinforcement, the stirrups, then the surface reinforcement. Now we don't have any stirrups here. Yeah, we have different options. And then you can print such graphics, you know, like maybe one. Uh, um, graphic with the longitudinal reinforcement and the stirrups and one graphic uh, with the surface reinforcement can you display uh, can you print in the printout report okay yeah as you could see it's quite easy to disable it yeah, and show that okay then we turn to the last question for the, today. How can I properly unlock my license again? Yeah, that's for example valid or important when you have got a network license or you use your license on different computers or you share the license with colleagues and so on. Uh, and usually the license will be unlocked a couple of seconds after closing the program, after the borrowing time or the blocking period when a crash has expired. Yeah, the maximum borrowing time is uh, 30 days. And if you have got a crash and you don't open the program again, then the blocking period is 24 hours. Now, uh, right above, you can see the license manager. I open it. So and let's try it. I borrowed the license for 
30 days, yeah, until Christmas. It is in one month is Christmas, and I borrowed the license until that time. Okay. Yeah, but you can also borrow uh, the license for some days when you have haven't got any internet connection. Yeah, that would also be uh, pos possible, and so on. And with that button here, you can uh, well returning. You can return the borrowed uh, license earlier. Yeah, now it's borrowed until today. I hope it's clear now. Maybe what also is uh, necessary, if you logging off or logging on anything here, um, you have to have got an active internet connection uh, so that the log logout or login process can be communicated with our license server. Yeah, any change is only valid when you've got an internet connection and so on. Okay, that should be all for today. I would like to show you where you can find all the models on our website, of course. But the first model, I show you the model again. That model can find in the Luba Center. Just a moment, I open the Luba Center. Oh, I move it from the other screen. Now there are different examples, steel structures and so on, concrete structures, and under construction stages, there are this example. And if you would like to use it for that webinar, and you go through the webinar with the recording, for example, you only have to uh, deactivate the add-ons construction stages uh, or the add-ons construction stages. Okay, and on our website, under uh, global.com, under news and events, you find all webinars, today's webinar, and the next webinars, the previous webinars, and so on. We record all our webinars. Just click on today's webinar. You get, an, in the next days, you will get an email with your certificate, with the link to that page here, and then you will find the recording here. And the models that I presented in the webinar, you can find here. Okay, then if you don't work already with RFM6, maybe you can download a free trial version here above, and you can use RFM6 and RSTOP9 for 90 days. Those are full, full versions with all add-ons. Yeah, just try them or our section, or our win two, and so on. Okay, then maybe a last hint, when you close the webinar, where is a short survey? Yeah, it takes only one minute, I think. You can answer some questions, you can score us. Just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five then you can write down your wishes for future webinars and so on. If you don't want to do that, just leave it empty or enter a minus or slash or something like that. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thanks to Markus for answering the questions. I wish all yeah, a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.